Honestly, my sleeping system sucks. Like, I'm just gonna say it, it sucks. I even have some footage of me in Lufuhn where I was complaining about how I was hardly getting any sleep. I didn't get that much sleep last night. Oh, I was so cold and I was afraid that I wouldn't get enough sleep or I wouldn't fall asleep. And then here's my pillow. It's a sleeping bag sleeping bag cover with my clothes in it and here's my sleeping bag basically this is my bed you know I brought this sleeping mat with me and it's like the cheapest thing you can buy at the store the only good thing about that sleeping mat is that you're not like actually on the ground so <laughs> like this gives you a little bit of protection from the ground but that's it like this doesn't give you any warmth and it's not comfortable at all. I need to improve on my whole sleeping system in general so I can stay warm and actually get a good night to sleep because it's hard being on trail for several days and you're not getting enough sleep. My other issue is all of my gear's weight. So right now, like, oh my gosh, if you've seen some of my videos, my backpack is like the same size as me. Uh, it's humongous and it weighs so much. Even though a lot of my gear is cheap, there's a price to that, <laughs> ironically. When the cheaper something is, the more weight it might have. Like one example is my tent. Oh my God, <laughs> just lifting it up right now is so heavy. But yeah, like this tent is just absolutely humongous. I can't justify the weight of this tent for my trips anymore. This was a cheap tent because it was secondhand, but it's just like, it's just too heavy for my little body. <laughs> Another thing, I would just like to have gear that makes my life easier. For example, a GPS where I always have like this backup where I can press SOS and they can help me. So yeah, like I would say number one is my sleep system. I want to get better. Number two, is my weight like i want to reduce the weight in my pack and number three is like all the small little other things that can make my life easier while backpacking so i thought i would go through my wish list with you guys and show you guys what i like to buy okay as you guys can see here here's my backpacking wish list okay so the first thing i want to go through is my sleep system so like my sleeping pad basically yeah because i already like my sleeping bag and i don't really need any pillow or anything like i'm good when it comes to that my main issue is like i want to have a blow-up sleeping pad where I, like it's comfortable for me and it feels like a bed you know like i cannot be on a foam mat only. What I would like in a sleeping pad is that it's you can blow it up so it's like an inflatable sleeping pad. I would also like a four season sleeping pad because here in Norway it just it gets like so cold during the winter and I am a cold person in general so I wouldn't mind having like a four season sleeping pad during the summer. I, I don't care. I love being warm no matter what. So what I want is a four season blowable, durable, compact, lightweight sleeping pad which might be a lot to ask for but I know there are some good sleeping pads that meet that criteria, okay? <laughs> so the two ones that I've been looking at are the Exped Dura 6R and the Nemo Tensor sleeping pad. The Exped Dura has an R value of 5.8, which means that it's really good for winter. I believe it's really good for, it can last up to like minus 25 Celsius, which is perfect for where I live. It's also 990 grams, which isn't too bad. And as you can see, it's on sale for half price. And I just, oh my gosh, like, I don't like using money, but when I see deals like this and it's like something I want, I don't think I can just like skip over this. I think I really want to buy this actually. Like, let's just put it in my cart just in case. <laughs> Next, we can look at the Nemo Tensor sleeping pad. It's a little bit more expensive. It's 2,000 kroner, which is like 
Um, it has an R value of 4.2, so it's definitely not as warm as the x Dura. And it's a way lighter weight than the x Dura. It's like, it's 490 grams, which honestly, like that would work for both my sleeping system and the fact that like I wanna lose the weight to my pack. But I have heard some things about the Nemo Tensor. I've heard from a lot of reviews that it leaks a lot, so it doesn't like last that long and it's easy to get a hole in it. And I've also heard that there's leaking problems with the valve, so I don't know, it makes me hesitant. Anyways, here's the website for the Tensor sleeping pad. And it looks really cozy, it looks very nice and lightweight. But yeah, I mean, it's a little bit on the pricier end and it has some kind of bad reviews. And for the x Dura, I haven't heard anything bad about it. It's like a super durable sleeping pad that is like heavy duty. And I kind of like that. I mean, it's like good for long term, you know, and it's really good for different situations. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to buy it, guys. Like, it's going to make my life so much easier. I'm so excited to use it. <laughs> Next is my tent situation. So I think I can lose the most amount of weight in my pack by replacing my tent. The things that I like in a tent are that it's a smaller tent. It's a four season tent, weather resistant, so it can handle wind and rain and snow. Um, I found out that with the tent that I have now, it didn't hold up well when it was windy. Like, I literally thought my tent was going to fall apart when it was windy. I would like a tent that's really durable. Also, a tent that's lighter weight, easy to set up, and doesn't take much room in my backpack because that's also another thing I'm struggling with. Um, here are some tents I've been looking at. Here are two that I found that are kind of in my price range. Someone in the comments recommended a brand called Lanchan, which I've never heard of before, but it's supposed to be like an ultralight backpacking brand, I think. Since it's an ultralight tent, you actually use your own trekking poles to set it up. And it's a very small tent. And I'm a small person, so I don't have a problem with that. This looks like a good option. Like it's only 930 grams, which is really good. My only issue with this tent is that I don't think it will hold up in bad weather. Um, and it says it's four season, but I'm super skeptical about that. <laughs> like, I don't know. This tent doesn't look like it will hold up in minus 20 Celsius weather in the snow while it's windy outside. <laughs> there's another tent I want to show you guys that I really like. Um, there's actually this YouTuber that recommended this Nemo Kunai tent. And when I first saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, like this tent, it sounds like exactly what I want. The only issue is that it's pricey. It's around $550 or 5,000 kroner. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like that is, a, that's an investment. This is what it looks like. I think it looks so cool. Like it looks so, I don't know. It just, it looks super sturdy and that it will last in really windy weather, which is exactly what I want. And honestly, it's like, this looks so good. It's compact and durable and um, good for me as a solo backpacker. I, this is definitely on my wish list. Like, I really, really want to spend the money on this tent. I'm really liking how it looks like. I guess I just have to wait until it's on sale or until I am, comf or like, I'm brave enough to actually spend the money for it. But this is definitely on my wish list and I would love to try it out. Like, oh, it would be so fun to try it out. Next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the DPS. And okay, you guys, it's actually not a secret, but I am, I get lost really easily. <laughs> I'm just like one of those people that just goes and explores and then I'm like in my head and then all of a sudden I'm like, where am I? <laughs> That actually happens all the time for me and I mean it's not a good trait when you're hiking all alone 
I feel like getting a GPS is kind of bougie, but I thought a GPS would be so cool to be able to use because then I feel like I'm always safe. Like I can send my location to my parents or my friends showing where I am. And it's also a very good way to call for help. Like you can use the SOS button on the side, which honestly, like that makes me feel so much safer, especially as a solo hiker. But yeah, I feel like a GPS is something like further in the future when I'm doing more crazy hikes. In general, if you're invest going to invest in a GPS, it's gonna be really expensive. Um, it's around $600 just for like a good quality GPS. There's this one GPS that I've really been looking at and it's the InReach Explorer Plus. It's really good with water resistance, which is good for rain, which is really good here in Norway. It's also a two-way communicator, so I can send messages to my parents if I want. And there's also an SOS button. This is what it looks like. It's like this is one that I would like to have like it doesn't look too complicated it's small um, the SOS button is right here easy um, so yeah I, I think I would like to invest in something like this um, down the line next thing is my water filtration system technically you can drink the water here in Norway without worrying that much but but you end up facing problems when you're walking in farmland, like that is some risky business. The main issue is the animals pooping or, you know, peeing in the water. So I would really like to invest in the water filtration system because then I can stop worrying as much on my hiking trips. My first option is the Katadine B-Free replacement filter with a um, collapsible water container. Now these two go hand in hand. Here is what the filtration filter looks like. So here's the tip of it, and then you attach it to some sort of water patch. And here's an example of one like this. Um, and this is like really good because it's collapsible. I can fold it and it doesn't take that much room in my backpack. So I've been really eyeing this option. I've also been just eyeing in general live straw products because I've heard that they're very good for filtering water. Um, with this, you actually like press down the bottle and it filters the water while you press it down and then you just drink it. I really like that option actually. Um, that option sounds really good, but it is on the price you're in. It's $90, so that's an investment. And lastly, my cooking system. Right now I just have um, a normal kettle and the, my only problem with my kettle is that it kind of takes up a lot of room. Like it's a really bulky kettle and it's hard, heavy duty, which I like. I saw a YouTuber use this collapsible kettle and I was like, oh my gosh, like that's something I would like to try. So it collapses all the way down, like it's smushed which, oh my gosh, like that sounds so nice. Like it doesn't take much space in your backpack. And then it opens up um, where you can fill it up with water and boil it. I would love to try this actually. Backpacking in general is an expensive activity. All these things are, some, are things that I would like to have. I think it would make my life easier. It would definitely make my life way more comfortable while backpacking.